morning. I am joined in studio. I'm always impressed when folks can make their way out. And, of course, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, Billy Guy Bembe joins me uh, in the studio right now. Talk show host, inspirational speaker, author as well. But also the the uh, founder, if, if I may say, right, of Black Child is It's Possible. A very good morning to you. Thank you so uh, much. It's a Bembe. pleasure to be here. <laughs> and thank you very much for making your way into studio. I appreciate it. But as we were saying to me, your fair, uh, well, four o'clock every morning, standard, you up, you're working. Definitely. In fact, it stems from uh, how I was raised at home. Ubaba was a karateka. So, you know, karate people are very disciplined. We woke up 4 a.m. regardless of weekday, regardless of weekend. Yeah. And it's in our blood. My sister and I is standard. I can't go on holiday and try and wake up late. 4 yeah. a.m. My yeah. body says, dude. Let's let's st- let's stand up now. Let, let, let's get going. Yeah. And then what time does it say? Okay, time to rest now in the evening. Well, geez, that's the sad part because uh, I sleep quite late. I'm a very busy young person. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've always been anti idle hands, you know, because they say they they, 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 they then they become the devils, you know, uh, tools to use. But uh, <laughs> um, I sleep as late as possible, mm-hmm. and four a.m. standard, I'm up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeepers, hey! And uh, I suppose I don't I don't feel bad now about uh, <laughs> having you in in studio nice and early. Let's talk about to the Black Child Productions. Black Child, it's possible. Tell us a bit more about this. You know, um, Black Child, it's possible is quite a, a unique uh, thing which uh, started in about 2009, but it only makes sense for me to explain what happened before 2009 for the birth of Black Child to come about. Um, I, I became an entrepreneur at a very young age, um, given the fact that I went to UJ, um, where I completed in 2005. But um, in 2003, when I arrived um, during my first year there, mm-hmm. I started a company at the age of 19. Mm-hmm. And um, I've always worked against the grain most of the time, where you find you want to start something or your dreams are slightly larger than what they should be for a child at a certain age. Yeah, so yeah. I remember challenging UJ management at the time um, to say, you know, they, 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 there was the rule that um, to receive your qualification, you have to cover about 680 hours of experiential work in a company. Mm-hmm. And at the mm-hmm. time I had started my company and, you know, I often speak about the word controversy or be controversial Mm -hmm. and it it can both work positive and negatively but um, I was controversial in the fact that I stood my ground with asking the university to allow me to be the first student who is his own boss Um, because I said if the university is teaching us about entrepreneurship and government is talking about entrepreneurship surely someone should be allowing us to actually experiment with entrepreneurship. Yeah, now, having yeah. started a company, having my first employees being my classmates, I said, um, as much as a boss has to fill out a report as to how I did in these hours, <laughs> my clients are my bosses yes. and they can fill out how I serve them. Yeah. And that's how my company and brand began. And I was allowed to actually qualify with being my own boss in my own company. Mm-hmm. And after that, I never looked back. Um, I had a dream of reaching a certain success. You know, if, at a certain age finance uh, is, is, is your sort of measure of success and um, at the age of 24 which was my my target um, I reached that particular bracket at 23 mm. and again from a township I kept telling everybody I'll start a business I'll do this with it and it's unfortunate that we don't often get the kind of support that we need you know mm. people mm. don't see that long-term vision but I did it by the age of 23 and what I needed to change this is where the birth of black child comes in was how a lot of us grew up in villages and townships and we often are sitting there watching our sister you know our big brothers make it per se mm. and don't come back to just grab our hand and show us the how part yep. and yep. I realized that you know the first time I bought a drop top I went to the hood. It was pimped up with rims, etc. And I was like, I'm that guy. The guy that when I was young, looked at and said, I wish he could come and tell me how he did it. Mm-hmm. But now I'm the guy who goes back to the hood to show off. And right there, I changed my frame of thought mm-hmm. that um, we come out of these places. And because for a long time, some of us were really disadvantaged, yeah. we go back there to now show off how well we've done instead of go and show off to young people how well they can do mm-hmm. and paint the same mm-hmm. picture. Mm-hmm. So Black Child, it's possible, I often say, are four words that were born from perhaps a much higher power. Because I woke up one day, I had built a studio very similar to the one we're in today mm-hmm. in, in my house when I was still a bachelor. And um, I built that to write a book. 
And I woke up one morning and four words came out my mouth, black child, it's possible. Mm-hmm. And I knew right there I need to do something with that. So I began with a process of an audio book um, called Each One Teach One. It's got 16 chapters. I approached at the time in 2009 when I was actually writing the book, um, DJ Sbu, and yes. she was with a youth radio station at the time. Yeah. And um, for the life of me, you know, when you hear the statement and the rest is history, I literally went there for just an interview to just go share the piece of black child, it's possible. Possible. But um, the listeners demanded that I return And every Monday after that I returned And from a book it became a series of DVDs mm-hmm. From that it became a company And right now we've spread ourselves across all nine provinces Where we inspire through speaking and teaching mm-hmm. um, We run programs of our own We actually customize a number of solutions Because I often believe um, what we do is a solution Just like any business is mm-hmm. But ours is a solution to the education um, issue that we currently having the issue of young people who are you know who don't have the, their self esteem in the right place yeah. you know confidence levels I often say that Mina besides education and other things confidence has opened so many of my doors mm. and that is which we're trying to impart through Black Child It's Possible so in a nutshell that is how it was born it was on the basis of saying we need to go back to those who do not have the how part and mm. show them how mm. and Black Child It's Possible is simply that speaking um, uh, and, and, and teaching through inspiration you said uh, you mentioned earlier on that you at, at the age of 23 24 you had a uh, you, you had a bracket that you wanted to reach and you reached that. Did you reach it, that through speaking? And of course, you must tell us what that bracket is. Uh, you know, I, I basically, to put it bluntly out there, I wanted to make my first million by the mm-hmm. time I turned 24. Mm-hmm. And that sounded like the biggest joke in the township where I grew up. It yeah. really did. I mean, I was called to Mr. Oh, you know, and I know. Mm-hmm. And it's because my, my, my dreaming was slightly larger than, as I say, what a child at that time should was yeah. perceived to must think, you know. And um, I did that a year earlier than, than, than I did. And hence, I even speak to it to say, it's not that I was more intelligent than anyone else, mm-hmm. but I did something that everyone can do, which is take the first step. I took the first step in what I wanted to achieve. Yeah. And ultimately, once you take one step, you know, uh, the second step shows itself mm-hmm. and other opportunities present themselves. And, and, and was it through Black Child It's Possible? No, this was a through my venture. company called Trinity Entertainment, which was my first baby that I started. Yeah. And um, T- Tell us a bit more about that. Trinity Entertainment, basically, as it started, I went into the event scene. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my first contract was with my university. Again, being controversial. Um, after completion, I said to them, well, if you've taught us all about entrepreneurship, put me to the test. Mm-hmm. You know, if mm-hmm. the university itself how many events happen in a university in a, in a day, in a week, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, they gave me the 21 year, years of excellence um, to, to, to handle. Nice. Um, mm-hmm. that, in, that in itself had a number of challenges, which I speak about. I often, you know, want to speak less about success and more about the challenges because it's what builds someone, you know, mm-hmm. once you know what challenges did you go through. And um, I remember, I mean, number one, issues of um, costing, which is a lot of what entrepreneurs go through. Yeah. You may perhaps have the right product, but you don't know how to cost it because you didn't have the experience. So when I was asked, uh, so how much are you going to charge for these services? Yeah. I undercharged most of the time because, you know, we also have this concept, how to guys, or no, man, arma skepsele, you yeah. know, yeah. anything is fine, you know, yeah. no matter how little. So, Often when you also undercharge, you put yourself in a very, very serious predicament of also delivering bad quality yeah. because you don't have all the elements in terms of, you know, what they will cost. Because you can't go back and say, oh, yeah, by the way, Actually, I need 100K <laughs> more than exactly the, the question of, I suppose, value, knowing what your value is and not being shy about letting people know what that is. Yeah. In fact, that took a very long time um, sitting where I am today. It took a number of years to actually be able to also, you know, accept certain things and also walk away from things that I feel, you know, devalue uh, where I'm at and how much I've invested in Mm. both myself and the products that I do. So Trent Entertainment was mostly an events company and at a very young age, I really, really did amazing things. I mean, I went on to cross borders, both Botswana and Swaziland and I opened branches there Mm. of Trent Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I think I was uh, 24, approaching 25. And that's when I also, the thought of writing a book was was spawned to say, as all of this is happening in my life, because I believe every day is a new experience and you learn something new. Yeah. But I wanted to take young people on the journey with me. Like, oh my goodness, I've just come out of a boardroom and X, Y, and Z has happened. And for a lot of people 
when when you put up such you know it's almost on a why are you making us privy to that information and for me it's who is going to make young black people privy to such information so if, they if too you don't do it if, so absolutely. they too can do the same yeah. you know? we'll, we'll unpack that uh, a bit further i have billy guy bembe in studio with me as we celebrate young south africans doing amazing things a touch after five o'clock let's get to your latest power news